We're back again. We're back again with our race and religion difficult questions series. I've got the most incredible guy standing next to me. Sitting next to me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pastor Phil Jackson, he is from the Firehouse Community Center. He is one of the legends in Chicago, okay, of originating hip hop church, uh, pulling together hip hop culture and what it means to just be a, 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 a powerful Christian uh, and be on fire for your faith. Man, you inspired me wow. growing up. I mean, I'm old. old. I'm old. Oh my God. <laughs> you was around, man. I remember going to Cross Movement stuff when I was younger. Yeah. I remember coming to uh, some of your service all the way from the South Side yeah, the house, uh, as a teenager. Yeah. I remember he came and spoke at uh, when I was in college um, and talked passionately about what it means. You were talking about defending the poor and speaking mm -hmm. up and you're challenging people. Yeah. You have been around for a long time. Yep, yep. Uh, you have seen a lot. Um, and I just want to just give you your roses right now. Yeah, give give that. you your roses. Right, come on. Come on, yeah, we got a few people in the background. Give them his roses right now. <laughs> While you living and breathing, right, you know right, what I right, mean? Right, right. About all the powerful and incredible stuff that you're doing. Uh, but I got I got to blitz you with some questions, man. Yeah. I got to hit you with what's going on right now. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. You know it's crazy. Woo. It is crazy. Yeah. You've been in the game for a long time, encouraging black and brown youth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Talking about justice, speaking through the arts, doing those things. Yeah. Man, we are opening our phones right now every other day, mm. and we're seeing black people get assaulted. I mean, right. uh, killed, exactly. shot. Right. Uh, we're seeing so much violence that has to do with race. Uh, in our country, yeah. um, and we're seeing a lot of uh, questions being raised about uh, our faith yeah. and how that intertwines with that. Right, um, man. I'm a 14 year old kid opening up my phone right now <sighs> in Roseland, in Lawndale, right, right. Uh, and I'm yeah. seeing what's going on. Right. Um, speak to that. Just well, you speak know, to it. First thing is, is that there is uh, uh, <clears throat> as, a, as a 14 year old mindset looking at that piece. Right, there's a context of how much it relates to me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how many times have I seen it? Mm -hmm. um, because after a while, just like the violence in Chicago, people get numb to it, right? And yes. you get numb to it like, well, that ain't my cousin, that's my relative. Yeah. But it, in this context, it pertaining to racism, it pertaining to police brutality, it does affect you, right? I mean, however much you want to take it serious or not, you could be that same kid as soon as you hang up on your phone looking up at a cop saying, what are you doing, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? So you've got to be, um, you, you got to recognize that, uh, you know, injustice, um, Anyways, it's injustice for you, you too, right? Yes. So, so, so it's not even a matter yes. of it didn't happen to you, it's not your cousin, it's your relative. So you got to own what you can in, in, in the midst of that. Now, part of that also is that um, you can't look at everything all the time. Mm -hmm. You will be in a state of depression like forever. Like I can't, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's stuff that stuff that hasn't been seen yet and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So a part of that is finding ways to uh, just navigate and cope through it so that you can remain sane and remain, um, in some regards, uh, hopeful that God is doing something in the midst of this hurt and this pain and this trauma. You know, I think all of this is God bringing stuff out that folks have tried to cover up and 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 though it's hard to look at and hard to deal with, mm -hmm. um, but maybe giving us as followers of Christ, especially young people, right, mm -hmm. um, a voice to finally say what needs to be said. Because sometimes mm -hmm. the church and young people are the best uh, witnesses of this, they tiptoe around what's being real. They don't yeah. tiptoe around like, right. we need to talk about, you know, black people and it, <laughs> and we won't go deep into systemic racism and other things like that, right? Yeah. We'll just tiptoe yeah. around it. And so young people are sitting there like, yo, my teacher just said something to me in school today. It was, right. it was off the chain. And, and so young people have that freedom to, to, to do that. So find a place where you can be real about it, be aware of it, yeah. at the same time, enable yourself to find some 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 hope and some tricks so you're not drowning yourself in it. And then arm yourself with, the, with your voice to, to speak into that, you know? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Not being afraid to speak up. Man. Now, that's huge because when I was a teenager coming down here and you speak, I remember you passionately speaking about what it means for us to own our faith. You yeah. were speaking about right. you need to live right yourself. You need to right, <laughs> do us right. right yourself. You need to speak up yourself. You need to be an example yourself. It's true. Um, uh, how could you encourage some teens today who are just uh, dealing with what they're seeing about taking faith as and owning it themselves? Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing about that is that Christ recognized the same pain that you. This is this has not escaped God. This is like, dang, what happened? Oh, snap! No, God is on on yeah. top of this. God is aware of that, right? And and the reality is, God, God 
Christ in his humanity mm -hmm. weeps as we weep, hurts as we hurt, is pissed off as we're pissed off, right? Yes. And so in the same context, yes. real, the reality is your own humanity is 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 freedom in, in Christ, right? Where Christ is, there is liberty, right? And so in the midst of that freedom in Christ, your own humanity um, speaks to that inner uh, connection. So that, God doesn't want us to be numb with that. God, God doesn't want us to ignore that. He doesn't want us just to tiptoe around. He wants us to take that anger, turn it into righteous indignation for whatever sphere of influence you can, if it's your three friends, if it's the two white friends that are on the cheerleading squad or those on whatever team, whatever, talk about what it is you're feeling about that, right? And having a sense that, uh, um, hey, I, I want to be a witness in the midst of this, but I'm, this, is, this is hurtful right now. So crisis is, is there. It's not like you have to departmentalize when Christ can be engaged and Christ can't be engaged. Christ is there right right then. And so don't don't let that cover, don't, don't cover that stuff up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So your faith can come alive, so it can come alive because you know, the more you you don't do that, then you just you just you just performing. You know, yeah. you're you're not really being that reborn uh, believer in the midst of that. You yeah, know? yeah. And you are someone who's always been raw and been real. Uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you 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 uh, taking down the filter that's trying to speak directly to people about what's going on. I want to give you an opportunity if you're not uh, black, brown, and tired right now. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> uh, to speak out, we I mean, who knows? We we usually get a couple thousand views on this thing, man. You know, it stretches around. Uh, Speak out against some of the negative things you see in our society right now. And then also talk about some of the practical things you guys are doing uh, at the firehouse yeah. and in your community work, just in the community, yeah. uh, through music, through arts, through whatever. Crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let me, let me address the first part. Yeah. Let me tell you about the story. The story, right? Yeah. There's a young man, true story, in New York in the, in the early 90s, was leaving work, trying to go home early. Could have cut through Central Park to get home early, right? It may not seem like a good thing because Central Park's big, but it's cut through Central Park to get home early. He is walking by this one particular area and these bushes were shaking. These bushes were shaking, bushes were shaking. He heard a voice, help me, help me, help me. He's like, I'm not trying, I'm in New York. I don't know what this is. They may try to jack me. I don't know what's up, right? So he walks away, but the voice got lower and lower, right? And so he's bugging, like, what's going on? These bushes are shaking. Mm -hmm. So he turns around and he says, hey, who's in there? Get out. He just makes a bunch of noise. It's just him. He's shaking the bushes himself. And he sees on the other end a man leaving, running, right? And he's mm -hmm. like, okay, great. Hey, whoever's in there, you're fine. It's just me. Nobody's here. You're all good. You can come out. The person left. He didn't hear anything. He, he says the same thing again. The person stands up, comes out, and it was his daughter. And wow. she says, Dad, is that you? And all I'm saying that for is that mm -hmm. the bushes are shaking. The bushes are shaking. We have a choice. We can take a shortcut and keep moving. And be like, I don't want to be about that. Or we can turn around and be like, what do I do and how can I do it to address the situation? You just never know. You're, you're turning around. I mean, sometimes a bully can, can run away because you just stood there, not today. Oh, snap, and walk away. But if you shook by that, not your own power, you recognize the fact that that, it, that that you have what it takes. And through Christ, right, we have what it takes, right? So don't be intimidated by the bushes that are shaking. And mm. that's one thing mm. that the young people inspire me for so long in ministry because they're the ones who got the juice. Yes. But don't <laughs> deny the fact that you don't have that juice because it's so tiring, it's so repetitive, and ain't nobody going to do nothing about it. Yes, young people are listened to more than me because of their own power and their context. So... Our work at the fire is fanning the flame of that with young people. That's why we say it so much. Oh my gosh, this light bulb just came on. This kid about to take over the world. Yes. I mean, we work with a young guy, man, and we work with young people. Our mission at the fire, right, is to interrupt the cycle of violence in the life of youth and young adults through the power of the arts and faith, right? Wow. And so we work with a young man who was arrested for a double temp murder. I was on trial for him. I was a witness for him. Worked with him for 10 years, right? And so we got him a job, got him out of the situation, got him out the way. Got him a job, and, and I'm saying, yo, if you stop smoking weed, we can get you a better job. He's like, look, Phil, I just stopped shooting people. <laughs> and as funny as that is, but that was real. I'm like, yo, you're right, you're right. Yeah. You, you, you know, you're right. You know, your mom would call me about the pictures of guns you would have, right? But it was that reality, one, um, that he felt comfortable to tell me that. There mm -hmm. was no judgment. Right. You know, I'm going to be like, yo, that, I will, man, I'm taking you to the police right now. What you, I ain't doing nothing crazy like that. The man is in a growth move, man, and he's mm -hmm. owning that, right? Mm -hmm. And the reality that he's seeing his own strength, like I just stopped doing this, I'm moving in this van, I'm one thing, little, little, little baby steps at a time, right? Yes. So our work at the yes. firehouse is to engage in young men, predominantly young men, we have some young women we work with as well, who are most likely to shoot somebody or to get shot. Yeah. That's what we do with our VIP, what we call very important process. Then we have our Spark Arts, which is a ton of seven different art disciplines. Like right now today at the firehouse, we have an MC school. If you go on our website, there's an MC school you can sign up for. Okay. Um, 
There is a footwork class. There's a beat science class, right? There's West African dance and drum, right? There's an array of different things that you can sign up for. And sometimes it shifts per quarter or semester, but there's an array of different things like that. Gradually, we'll have a recording studio and a film class, which, 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 which we've done a, a lot of, right? Our uh, desire, man, is that young people get in a space where they can be safe, and free and engage their own power. I mean, nobody needs permission to shoot nobody right. while I'll get class, but they need to be permission to be great, yeah. right? And so as that space is cleared out from all the stuff that you may hear and all the voices, man, God shows up in a miraculous way. And then young people are like, I am a nerd. I love tech. I did create this app. Oh my God, and you do that in a community of other people. And it's yes. like, yo, I'm not as goofy or weird as I thought I might have been with these other homies on the block. And so our work is that, man, six days a week, we got a whole outreach team that hits the block and knock on doors and find a little rerun in here. They really rerun, shoot your cousin. <laughs> Count to call me. And so now we right, have right. folks who are going after cats who are about their life. And then we have a whole mentors or navigators, we call them, who yes. walk with cats. And we have instructors who do all this other teaching and things like that, man. And, you know, it's just one of those places where I would pick the dope boys up on the block, right? I would do, we have our hip hop church and some of them would come, some of them would peep in and they would leave. But I'd pick them up um, on a Tuesday, take them to breakfast, but I have to bring them right back to the spot. I, I didn't have a place for them to go. Mm -hmm. So the young people are like, yo, where can we do the arts at every day? And mm -hmm. that's how the, how the Firehouse Community Arts Center was birthed, through the house church and through young people saying, we want to do the arts every day. And now I grab these young boys, take them to breakfast, bring them to the firehouse, and then they can begin to engage in our culinary arts class or various things like that, that they want to begin to see their own capacity in the midst of that, man. So... That's the powerful work that you're doing, and Amen. thank God for you doing it. You've been in the game again forever, and I just really appreciate what you're doing. How further can people connect with you, the yeah. Firehouse, uh, the Hip Hop Church movement that's still happening in yeah. Chicago, yeah. Yeah. and any last things you want to say yeah. uh, to our Chicago community? Okay, well, you can go to thefcac.org, the Firehouse Community Arts is a, an, um, initials, and check out what we're trying to do uh, on that on that site. There's different stuff we try to announce what's going on. Um, you can call the firehouse. We have a, a bunch of stuff that we have uh, going on. This sometimes publicized, sometimes it isn't, but we check that out. Um, one last thing I want to say, man, is that um, focus on what is is priority. You know. Um, uh, all the things going on around us can distract you from what you need to be grounded in. Oh, another story, right? This dude driving a Volvo, got in a car accident. The ambulance came. The man was like, my Volvo, my Volvo, my Volvo. The ambulance said, sir, your, your left arm is cut off. <laughs> the man said, my Rolex, my Rolex, my Rolex. He was bugging <laughs> on the wrong stuff. And all I'm saying, man, is the stuff that, that's out there, it's real, it's hard, but it can distract you oftentimes from being grounded in Christ and knowing that God ain't shook by this. Right? God's pissed off, angry as we are, but we, as we're grounded in him, um, don't let the stuff outside of us shake us as much as who is in us. All right? So stay grounded in that, y'all. We need your voice. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, Phil. yeah. And God bless Appreciate you. Keep it good Let's work, man. Again. Let's talk again. We didn't have this when I was doing music back in the day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We had www.squat.com back then. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It was great work. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs>